to shame. Be my protector, O God, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, Amen. and with your spirit. We have a smaller crowd, of course, today with all of the snow that's uh, outside, but I'm glad that you brave souls are here also uh, to celebrate this Holy Mass and such a beautiful setting outside also that even can bring a hopefully a sense of joy to our hearts and renewal also as we see the freshness of the snow outside. As we gather this morning to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause acknowledging our sins before the Lord, asking him to make us once again white as snow, that we might be made worthy to receive these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace 
as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. I turn to you. joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks, or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, and they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy immediately left him, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed, that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. getting everything set up for this homily because I'm super excited about it, to be honest, although I'm not sure exactly how it's going to come out. So I might have to redo it and record it again tomorrow for those online. <laughs> to start with, we even at the end of that first reading, I mean, we hear about uh, this person who has leprosy or the Lord giving instruction to Moses about what to do if someone does have leprosy and that they're called ultimately unclean and they're even driven out. They're called to dwell apart. They're exiled outside of the camp. As the end of that first reading even said, so he's not even allowed to live at home. In the Old Testament, and even now in the New Testament, we should see the connection between, of course, leprosy and sin. Leprosy is to the body what sin is to the soul. Of course, one being one that something that you can see, the other is something that is unseen. In some ways, in that manner, it's even like a leprosy in terms of a disease, I mean, we have a disease that we're dealing with, of course, throughout the world right now with COVID, right? Something that we can't see with the naked eye, need a microscope or something to be able to even see that disease, that, disease, that virus. It's interesting about leprosy, though, and I was thinking of this analogy between sin in, our, in the world back in the time when leprosy began, sin in the world now, and so often the Israelites were convicted of the sins that they had com been committing and recognized the sin and turned back to the Lord. In our, the time in which we live, though, we don't like to hear about sin, number one, and number two, we don't even recognize things oftentimes as sin. So just like leprosy some, being something that's seen and COVID being something that's unseen, so sin sort of relates to both of those things in both times. Interestingly, actually, as I was doing a little bit of uh, preparation also for this homily, people in the Old Testament were afraid of people that had leprosy driving them out into exile because they were afraid that they would catch it by touching the person, by being in contact with them. But actually, leprosy is not spread by touch. It's spread by droplets that come out of your mouth. Very interesting, right? That it would be in some ways then also connected to COVID. 
course, with leprosy, you, have to be, you would have to have someone around you for even months at a time in order to actually catch leprosy. The virus, of course, you still have to have someone around you for a substantial amount of time. That's why they say try not to stay in uh, people's presence that are outside of your household for an extended period of time. It's interesting, those connections. And again, the connection that's there even with sin in our world today and us not wanting to recognize sin as sin. And I think it's the very thing that we need to do and even... Uh, need to do in order for the virus to be driven out of our midst. The Lord desires to make us clean. That's what he desires. He does will it. And he even says to us, be made clean. But we have to do the same thing that the man with leprosy did in the gospel. We have to come before the Lord with our sinfulness and say, Lord, if you will it, you can make me clean. We have to seek out that mercy. We have to seek that forgiveness. And then the Lord can make us pure as the freshly fallen snow outside. Which made me think then also of snow in the scriptures. Thinking of uh, the first uh, one that I looked at was Isaiah in chapter 1 verse 18. The Lord speaks about making us clean it says, though our sins be as scarlet, they, we shall be made white as snow. Though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Remember even the word scarlet, it'll come again later. But I read further, I thought it would be important to get some context of um, even what's going on in that first chapter of Isaiah as I was looking at snow. And here's what the Lord is speaking about in chapter 1 of Isaiah. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord speaks. Son have I raised and reared, but they have disowned me. Speaking of the people of Israel, right? An ox knows its owner and an ass its master's manger. But Israel does not know my, uh, does not know. My people has not understood. In some ways, the Lord's even saying we're kind of dumber sometimes than oxes and asses, right? Oxes and donkeys. Because we don't recognize again our sin or we don't repent even of our sin. And he continues, Ah, sinful nation, people laden with wickedness, evil race, corrupt children. They have forsaken the Lord, spurned the Holy One of Israel, apostatized. Where would you be struck, you that rebel again and again? The whole head is sick, the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot to the head, there is no sound spot. Interestingly, that's the same kind of language in the book of Leviticus that's spoken about when it comes to leprosy. If someone is found from, from head to toe with spots all over their be, to be taken before the priest, and if it's a certain kind of wound, then they're, they're called unclean. If it's foul and festering and there's flesh that's revealed, then they are called unclean and it's leprosy. If, however, the wound from head to toe is white and it's not showing any flesh, then they're declared clean. They don't have leprosy. From the sole of the, from the, sole of the foot to the head, there is no sound spot, the Lord is saying. So there are no uh, clean spots. They're all unclean, foul and festering. And this is even how he describes it. Wound and welt and gaping gash, not drained or bandaged or eased with solve. It's describing even what happens with leprosy. Your country is a waste, it says. Your cities burnt with fire. Your land before your eyes, strangers devour, a waste like Sodom overthrown. That's how repulsive sin is. It's how repulsive leprosy is. But sin is just as repulsive. It's even more repulsive. In fact, so much so that this is what the Lord says as the people of Israel go to worship God in the temple. He says this, 
in, chap- in verse 13 of that same chapter. He's sick and tired of the sin, and he says, Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assembl- assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down. I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. The Lord gets tired of our sin, especially when we don't repent, when we don't recognize even our need for repentance and the lord even says all all of our sacrifice that that we offer before the lord really it's an abomination to him and though we pray the more he will not listen it says because our hands are full of blood wash yourselves clean think about even how many people then come to mass and receive the Eucharist without going to the sacrament of confession, without washing themselves clean, it gives a whole other meaning, as St. Paul says even, right in Corinthians, when we receive the body and blood of the Lord in an unworthy manner, we eat and drink judgment on ourselves, condemnation on ourselves, he says. Why? Because of what is also said there in Isaiah, because our hands are full of blood. Whose blood? The blood of Christ. We're reaching out to receive the body and blood of the Lord, but if we're doing it in an unworthy manner, then we're receiving him with blood on our own hands, the blood of Christ, as if we're guilty of his sin, of not his sin, we're guilty of our sins which crucify him, which is true we are, but when we ask for that forgiveness, then that blood covers us in a forgiving way. That was all just from looking up a passage on snow. But here is what the Lord then uh, also says. There's still hope, right? In chapter 1, verse 18, Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they be crimson red, they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey... You shall eat the good things of the land, thinking of the Eucharist again. But if you refuse and resist, the the sword shall consume you, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We can become white as snow, our world can become white as snow, and every time I think that it snows outside, the Lord is reminding us of that. He's showing us a purification even of the world, the beauty that's there, right? Right? Whether we like the snow necessarily or not because of uh, the treacherousness of it is another matter. But the beauty is still there. The other passage that I looked up on snow comes from Psalm 51, which is what we pray every day in the liturgy, or every Friday in the liturgy of the hours, the day that uh, the Lord dies on the cross for us. In Psalm 51, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. I want you to remember the word hyssop there also. There's the reference, of course, to uh, snow, but remember hyssop. Also remember scarlet from the reading from Isaiah. The Lord desires to make us clean. We can be turned white from head to toe. <laughs> the priest, and what do we? What is it that Jesus says to us? I'll get to that in a minute. If you wish, the man, the leper, says to Jesus, "You can make me clean." And Jesus says, "I do will it be made clean." And then he says to him, "Now go and offer your cleansing, for your cleansing, what Moses prescribed." What did Moses? prescribe when someone wanted to be declared clean of leprosy they had to go before the priest sound familiar when we want to be cleansed of sin we have to go before the priest to receive that sacrament of confession 
This is what Moses prescribed. That they would take with them as that sacrifice, as that uh, offering for the cleansing, two birds, cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop. They would kill one of the birds, and with the, the remaining bird that was still alive, they would take the bird that was still alive, dip it in the blood, dip the cedar wood in the blood, the scarlet and the hyssop in the blood, and it would be sprinkled by the priest over the person who had leprosy. How many times, do you think? Seven times. And then they would be declared clean. To be sevened, to be sevened in the scriptures means that they are renewing their oath with God. Think about the word sacrament, which comes from the Latin word sacramentum. Sacramentum means oath. When we come, when we go to the priest, in the case of the Old Testament, when they've been cleansed from leprosy, they take that those two birds, they kill one, they dip the other live one, the cedar wood, the scarlet, and the hyssop into the blood, and the person sprinkled seven times, they're renewing their oath with God. But we have a new oath. Jesus, who laid down his life for us on the cross, it's his blood with which we are cleansed. And so when we go, when we have sin, when we fall into sin, once again, we go to the priest and we renew our oath with God. We reestablish that covenant with ourselves, between ourselves and God. And until we do that, if we're receiving the body and blood of the Lord without having gone to the sacrament of confession, without having received that forgiveness of our sins, then we're again eating and drinking condemnation on ourselves, St. Paul says. It's why in the Old Testament again, God was saying to the people of Israel that their sacrifice was an abomination to him because they wouldn't repent of their sins. It's why they had blood on their hands. Let's go back to Psalm 51. <laughs> because it doesn't end there, right? It's not that we should just be laden with the guilt of our sin, but that we should be set free from our sin. That we should be purified just like the snow is pure out there. We should be purified from our sin. And once that happens, once the Lord turns away his face from our sins, this is what it says in Psalm 51. Turn away your face from my sins. Blot out all my guilt. A clean heart create for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. We're strengthened once again. We're resolved once again. Do not drive me away from your presence, nor take, me from, make, nor take from me your Holy Spirit. Restore my joy in your salvation. That's what it's about when we recognize our sinfulness before the Lord. It's not just, again, I don't preach about sin just to make us feel guilty I preach about sin so that we can recognize the greatness of God's forgiveness that he offers to us, especially in the sacrament of confession, so that we can be elated once again with God's joy, recognizing again our salvation. Restore my joy in your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit that sinners may return to you. Rescue me from death, God my saving God, that my tongue may praise your healing power. That's what we're called to do once we've received, once we've sworn that oath again, our tongue then should proclaim God's healing power, especially in the sacrament of confession. We should go running out of the sacrament of confession, excited about having been forgiven of our sins and lighting the world up on fire with that same kind of passion about the forgiveness of our sins that's offered to us. First in baptism and then in confession. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Make Zion prosper in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with proper sacrifice, burnt offerings and holocausts, 
Then bullocks will be offered on your altar. Remember God being tired of the sacrifices that people offered because they were offering them still, even though they were sinning and not repenting of that sin. It's when we repent and then turn our lives back over to the Lord that then he is again pleased with the sacrifice that we offer to him. The scriptures are incredible. <laughs> to see all of the ways that they tie together, right? The Lord desires to teach us and desires for us to receive his love, to receive his forgiveness, to receive his mercy so that we can come before him and offer him a beautiful sacrifice, one that he is pleased to receive. And we offer him ultimately the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. That's what we do every time we come to Mass. We offer to our Heavenly Father once again the greatest sacrifice of history. God who offered himself for the forgiveness of our sins. And we do so with a pure heart when we prepare ourselves by going to the sacrament of confession. And it's a great opportunity to do so as we enter just this coming week into the season of Lent once again to be renewed, to be refreshed, to be forgiven once again through that sacrament of confession so that we may enter into the depths of the Easter mysteries and the depths of the joy that comes with new life and the resurrection, a new life that we're given every time we go to the sacrament of confession. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen. We're getting the intercessions. Hang on. <laughs> For the church of God in every place, that she may shine forth as a community of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who have neglected the sacraments, that they may return to the healing peace of personal confession. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those studying for the priesthood, that they may prepare wisely and well for the permanent grace of ordination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially Robert Naff, Jr., Jordan Walker, Jack White, Robert Cobb, Barbara and Amy Cobb, Robert Cobb, Annie Ingle, and Andrew Hay. May they be healed in body and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that Christ may cleanse them and bring them to glory, especially Marino Munoz, Lincoln Galacher, Luciano Sam. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of Miles and Ann Lindy, for whom this Mass is being offered, for the prayers in our book of intercessions, and for those prayers we now hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers according to your holy will. For we ask them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord. Teach me your precepts. Blessed are you, Lord. Teach me. Pray, brother, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we, may this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Good Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
through whom Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. We offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess. 
confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting sal salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Since I had uh, said to you before Mass, also if we're, uh, we're nine feet apart, you have your masks on and you can sing. I figured we would sing while we can the Our Father too, huh? At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. They crave the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Give ear, my people, to my teaching. Incline your ear to the words of my they crave the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, they ate and What we crave the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. These we will not hide from the children, but will tell them to the next generation. they craved the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. The glories of the Lord and his might and the marvelous deeds he has done. They ate and had their feet. And what they crave the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven. He rained out manna to eat and gave them bread. What they crave the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Manage the bread of angels. He sent them abundance of food. The east wind he stood up in the heavens. The south wind directed by his might. They 
disappointed in what they craved. They rained flesh upon them like dust, winged fowl like the sands of the sea. They ate and had their fill, and what they craved the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed they craved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. They ate and had their fear. And what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. There's a few announcements, though, before we send you out. Remember that uh, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, right? So we have Mass at 9 a.m. Um, it's not a holy day of obligation, but important for us as Catholics uh, nonetheless. So we will also be having a noon service with the readings um, and the distribution of ashes. And then we'll be doing the same thing two times in the evening, one at 6 p.m. in Spanish, uh, service with ashes and then also at 7 p.m. in English, once again. And that is also a service with ashes. It's not, so just the readings with ashes, it's not a mass either. That way we can do two uh, quickly there as well, so that with the limited numbers, and hopefully by then the, s the snow will be gone, I suppose, also. I mean, I love the snow being around, don't get me wrong, but I also want people to be able to participate in their faith. So. So on, what's today? Fe on February 27th, yes, February 27th, we're starting a new program. If you remember right, um, back when the seminarians were here, and I think a little beyond that too, we did uh, coffee and donuts with Father Wickert. Um, we're shifting that up. I've been planning to bring something like that back, um, but it'll, uh, it'll be similar and yet at the same time very different. So. Uh, the name of the program is Evangelizing with Joy and Truth and Coffee and Donuts. So, <laughs> so the, we're focusing on the Evangelizing with Joy and Truth. There will be coffee and donuts there, though, uh, during that time uh, also, so that we can at least have some fun with them. Although in the beginning, I'm, I'll still be on Exodus, so I'll have a potato next to me or something. Um... Monday is the day that uh, the consecration to St. Joseph begins. I thought it was important to share this with you. We have 400 people from the parish that are participating in that consecration, both in English and in Spanish. That's pretty incredible, I think. So uh, 400 of us will be walking through that consecration beginning on this coming Monday. And then, of course, it ends on March 17th. There are CRS uh, rice bowls that are available also after Mass, as well as the little black books that are reflections for every day of the season of Lent. Those are also uh, at each of the exits that you can uh, pick up after Mass as well. And then um, it's a rough weekend to be doing that uh, collection for prepares, um, but remember I spoke about what prepares is. It's uh, a ministry within the archdiocese, actually within the state, that is trying to help care for uh, mothers and their babies uh, as they've uh, chosen to give birth to their child and maybe are struggling financially to help them from conception until the time that they're five years old, as much as we can to be helping them over that time. Um, and so the donations given to prepares their uh, envelopes that are on the tables also um, donations that are given to prepares will go towards uh, that ministry in particular. We also run that ministry. Uh, there's a part of that that's served right out of St. Brendan's here as well. So those donations help us even right here at St. Brendan's to help those people in our surrounding area. And then uh, I've been told that we need some uh, more volunteers. There. Uh, for the monthly vacuuming of the church. So there's people who have uh, volunteered to help vacuum the church at different times of the week. And so we need a number of uh, people to help with that. Once again, we've lost a few people uh, during this COVID time, especially not feeling comfortable coming in. Some of them are still doing that, but we need a number of others uh, to be helping with that. So if you could contact the parish office, and they'll put you ultimately in contact with Isaac, uh, who is organizing that for us. Also, of course, the Stations of the Cross will begin on this coming Friday. 
um, they will not be live streamed. So we will not have the Stations of the Cross live streamed. It will be in person. Um, and then, uh, of course, Wednesday, uh, but in, and then Wednesday, of course, Ash Wednesday. On Friday, uh, beginning on Wednesday, or no, sorry, that's Ash Wednesday. Beginning Thursday morning, I'll start confessions at 7.30 a.m. instead of 7.45 a.m. That'll be the same every day that I hear confessions, 7.30 instead of 7.45. And then on Fridays during Lent, before the Stations of the Cross, so from, uh, I believe it's 4.30 until 6.15 on this coming Friday and most of the Fridays of Lent, except the day that we do the consecration to St. Joseph, confessions will be 4.30 to 6.15. Let's pray our St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Good to see those of you who are able to make it tonight for Mass. Please, please, please drive home safely. And uh, I'm sure that the sidewalks, uh, if it's still been snowing the whole time, they might be a little covered over again. Uh, but well, so just be careful as you're walking also, right? So no injuries are allowed in the snow.